Hello, welcome back to Statman Dave Clips. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how Pau Torres would fit in at Manchester United, looking at the Spanish centre-back's qualities as a player and whether it would be the perfect partner for Harry Maguire. Anyway, let's dive into the video. Uh, the report's coming out of Spain that Real Madrid are interested, that Man United are interested. I think either club could, could do with him. Um, you know, the big thing for United, obviously, it's not something that's been quite apparent in the press that United are looking for a left-footed centre-half. For, from a footballing perspective, having a left-footed centre-half and a right-footed centre-back is good. Uh, you know, it allows those passing angles from centre-back. You know, having a natural player on the left side, natural player on the right side, opens up the ability to play ahead of a fullback in a sense, and that's one of the biggest benefits. But also the range is very different when you play a wrong-sided player, like a right-footed centre-back on the left or a left-footed centre-back on the, on the right. Spain, in fact, at the European Championships are playing two left-footed centre-backs. Uh, in in uh, Laporte and, of course, Pau Torres, um, both left-footed, which is quite interesting. But Pau is very much a left centre-back. I think that's one of the reasons why Man United have been linked with him and why they're looking at uh, him as a player, because that's the profile they want. Uh, in terms of his stats versus Sweden, uh, very good display. One block, uh, one throughout of his four tackles. Uh, but I think the impressive side was the amount of touches he had on the ball. 124 touches, 109 passes completed, and 93% pass accuracy. Far, uh, four out of his five long balls completed. A good display uh, against Sweden. And when you can, you know, you look at the positioning of Pau Torres, very high up the pitch. He's number four on that visualization there. So comfortable in possession. So let's dive into to Manchester United um, and, and kind of have a look at what they're doing and, and you know, where he coming. Obviously, Man United uh, at the moment kind of set up um, probably their best team right now. 4-2-3-1 with McFred, and, uh, with McFred in midfield, McTominay and Fred, Bruno at 10, Rashford on the left, and of course, Mason on the right, Cavani through the middle. Um, you know, again, you can rotate Paul Pogba into either of these positions. You can rotate Paul Pogba onto the left wing um, and so forth. But let's, let's for argument's sake, just go with the two holding midfielders. This is the big game set up for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when they played their best football. Of course, at the moment, it's Victor Lindelof and Harry Maguire. Man United, from a possession perspective, uh, rotate their side. When they're in possession, they play basically a 3-3-1 three, um, uh, three, three, in a sense where you have Scott McTominay dropping in between or to the right side of the uh, defenders, building this back three. You have Fred, you have Shaw, you've got Juan Bissaka, and then, of course, you've got the, the front four that, again, the link between them needs to be a bit better in the next season. Uh, but very much a, a wide focused side, you know, playing passes from these defensive positions into midfield and getting forward. So obviously the big thing with, with Man United this season has been, you know, looking at which centre-back is the best one. Obviously from a defensive perspective, uh, Victor Lindelof has been caught out at times in the Premier League against physical targets, sometimes with his concentration. Um, and that's, again, 26 years old. He's still not his prime. So that's one thing. Number one, Victor Lindelof is, is you know, is approaching what would be his prime. And Victor Lindelof has been very, very good um, in the tournament so far for Sweden. Obviously, his performance against Spain, man of the match performance. Nine clearances, two blocks, uh, one interception. Um, not as many passes and so forth, but, but again, did the thing what he needed to do. Defend the penalty area, Sweden defend deep. That's something that helps Victor Lindelof out and would help him for Manchester United. Of course, Man United should be defending high. That is the difference there. United should be defending high. That's kind of the style that United should have, pressing from the front. Uh, someone like Paul Torres coming into the side, obviously Victor Lindelof does play as the right centre-back. Maguire plays as the left centre-back and actually he's got a really good relationship with Luke Shaw for both United and for England. Uh, but let's throw Paul Torres in. So Paul Torres as a centre-half would be positioned on that left-hand side, obviously with the build-up phase, as we mentioned before. Uh, United getting into their kind of 3-3-4 shape. Um, you probably have Maguire in the centre. Powell left-hand side of the three and Fred. So obviously the, the the passes that are now on, you know, it's kind of, instead of playing the, the pass maybe naturally a little bit deeper with a left footer out there, you can naturally play a little bit more progressive forward. Uh, you know, you've got more passes into the feet of the forwards. You can link with the with Fred a bit better. You know, it's the natural kind of pass, natural side, comfortable uh, positioning. I think the one thing with Pau Torres that he can improve maybe is carrying out from the back. Uh, but United get that a lot from a lot from Harry Maguire, so maybe that's not ne as necessary as they need. But I think the big thing with Pau Torres in terms of his, his sort of strengths from a defensive situation, um, you know, let's take the Europa League final as an example. Pau Torres defended the... The penalty area really well for, for, for Man United. When crosses were out wide, Pal Torres was dealing with a lot of United's uh, passes into those areas. But let's dive into the numbers of that game. Let's dive into a little bit of um, 
the stats of it as well. Uh, so let's jump into Paul Torres. Let's go to his games and his matches against Man United, Europa League final, 7.2, decent score in the final. Four clearances, two blocks, 100% of his tackles, 100% of his ground duels, but only won one of his four aerial duels, um, completing five out of his nine long balls. One of the things that I noticed about Paul Torres watching this game back was he struggled a little bit uh, when under pressure. United pressed quite high in this game in certain parts of the, the football, and in the opening 30 minutes, Paul Torres, I think he lost the ball around three or four times where he was playing either flat passes into the feet of forwards or passes into midfield and United were intercepting the ball. That is a slight concern for me, number one. Uh, number two, there were two times when Cavani and uh, Paul Torres interacted together on the pitch. Both times, Cavani got the better of them. The first one, there was a little bit of a, there was a ball in behind. Paul Torres was goal side of Cavani. Cavani managed to push him off the ball. Um, Pal Torres took a touch back inside and Rashford came into the penalty area. Uh, second time, similar situation, ball played in behind, uh, 1v1 with Cavani, got kind of knocked off the ball. That is a concern for the Premier League because the, the striker that Cavani is, is replicated in the Premier League. That's a very English style of centre forward. So in a way, I'd worry a little bit in terms of, you know, Paul Torres coming up against a, a, a Gian, Paul Torres coming up against a, a guy like Chris Wood. And I think the issue for Man United is they've already, already kind of got a player like that in a sense. Um, obviously with with um, Victor Lindelof, you know, they've got a player there that is a little bit suspect in those uh, those parts of the game. Sometimes it can be a bit too weak. Sometimes concentration's off and sometimes it gets dominated aerially. And that is a bit of an issue. And when we look at the stats overall in the Liga uh, for Paul Torres, you know, it builds out that picture of a sense of, you know, kind of profiling him as a as a defender. Aerial duels there. Aerial duels won um, in terms of in the, in the, uh, in La Liga. Is this the Liga? It's the correct one. That's the Europa League. So again, Europa League, smaller... Um, sample of games, but only won 38% of his aerial duels. That is a bit of a flag for me in terms of a centre-back for the Premier League. Uh, you know, taking the look at La Liga, it's at 62%. So, you know, looking at that as a, as a statistic, sorry, maybe playing more physical players in the Europa League than in La Liga, 38% in, in Europa, 62% this season in La Liga. His aerial duel win rate over the course of his La Liga career is at 53%. By comparison, Victor Lindelof, has won 64% of his aerial duels. So you're looking at Pau Torres not being as dominant as you'd want. Like my big thing for center halves, dominant in 1v1s. You, if you're playing a pressing style, you're playing an aggressive style where you, you know, you're, you're, you're forcing your opponents out and you're basically playing on halfway. So, you know, we're pressing you out of the back. We, we've got, we, we've got our midfielders high. We're, we're pressing in sort of a, you know, a diamond shape in a sense. We, we're, we're like kind of squeezing the opposition out the back. You know, one of the issues that you've got to deal with as a defender in the modern day, balls into the channel, balls into your feet of the of the striker, both aerially and on the deck. That's why you've got to be dominant 1v1 is because you're literally playing on halfway. If you lose that 1v1 duel, the opponent striker is in. And that for me is the biggest, biggest thing right now when I look for centre-backs. And that comes from modelling it on Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk is the best centre-back in the world. Or he was pre-injury, right? Why is he so good? Because he's so dominant. So dominant, winning the duels, but also in possession, he's very, very dominant in terms of his passing style. I'd describe it as a dominant passing style. I wouldn't say the same thing for Paul Torres. And I feel that would be an issue that if United were to buy Paul Torres, it doesn't quite fit in a sense. And I do think that he's a good player. Don't get me wrong, he's a good player. But is he the right player for Man United? Look, he's quick in a sense by the stats, but then he doesn't look like he's quick. So he clocked up the top speed in La Liga last season. But when I've watched him, he doesn't strike me as a fast centre-back. We're looking at like an Upa Meccano, a Canate, that are quick centre-backs. It doesn't strike me that he moves quickly. Obviously, that's probably because of his style. He's quite a tall fella. But, you know, when you look at him versus a Sven Botman or you look at him versus, you know, other players in, in European football at centre-half, he just he wouldn't be top of my list for a Premier League side. I think where Paul Torres would absolutely excel is for Real Madrid. That is the the That would be the perfect signing for, for, for Paul and for Real. Dominant in the Liga, knows how to get it done in that competition. Um, he obviously, he's going to have less aerial threat in that comp as well. And I think that would be the better signing for Real Madrid. Obviously, they probably need a centre-back with Ramos gone. You know, rumours that v Varane's gone as well. So, for me, I don't think it makes sense for a United signing. But it makes sense for a Real Madrid signing.
Thanks for watching, guys. If you are new to Statman Dave Clips, please hit that sub button. We are just over 10k subs. Can we get to 20? That is the next goal. Smash that button right now and also get into the comments. Would you take Pau Torres at Manchester United or who else would you take? Rafa Varane? Sven Botman? Christian Romero? Get into the comments below.